Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. What's one quick way to piss away 75K? A prosthetic penis. We've got the Wizinator making an appearance in Wexford County. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. This afternoon from the 28th Circuit Court for Wexford County, we're taking up this case of people of the state of Michigan versus Eric Victor Van Weeren. This is file number 23. Dash one three eight zero five. One second. All right, wrong piece of paper was sitting on top of the folder. Disregard. So yes, I got the case number right. Right. It's two four dash one three eight zero five F H. Appearances, please. Wendy Perry, this is the prosecuting attorney for the people. Attorney Diane Longoria appearing on behalf of Eric Van Weeren. All right, uh, Mr. Van Weeren joins us today via Zoom from the Wexford County Jail. Mr. Van Weeren, are you able to see and hear the court, sir? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. All right, we are here today for an arraignment on an alleged bond violation. The defendant is currently out on bond on a case involving a charge of possession with intent to deliver methamphetamine as a second or subsequent, as well as an alternative uh, visual offender second and an alleged assault resist obstructive police officer. Looks like the defendant posted a bond of $75,000 and is required to um, no alcohol, and then no illegal or controlled substances with random testing four times a month. But that, of course, was changed to being random and not limited four times a month once the case was bound over. The allegation is here is that the defendant tested positive today for the use of the controlled substance methamphetamine and also uh, for attempting to circumvent the testing process and procedure due to the use of a fake penis and urine hidden in its lower groin area. Uh, Mr. Baron Weirin, you have the right basically to challenge this allegation. Uh, this could be considered a contempt for failing to comply with the court order, uh, but a contempt is not how we're handling the case. We are looking at this as a review of pre-trial release conditions. If you do want a hearing, the prosecutor would have to produce some evidence, which could be relatively simple, most likely a witness or two from the community corrections program. If you're found to be in violation of your bond, your bond could be modified, revoked, or continued. Uh, Ms. Longoria, uh, I'll let you speak for your client. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Unfortunately, unfortunately, I just got notice of this this morning. I didn't have the opportunity to speak with Mr. Vic actually it was okay. this afternoon, um, and I um, didn't get the opportunity to speak with Mr. Van Weeren about it. So at this point, I would ask that he would stand mute. And all right. So today is Thursday. The court will enter. Um, uh, now we call it a not guilty plea, but realistically, it's not a finding of guilt or innocence. It's whether or not he has violated it. So we'll just go ahead and enter that as a not guilty plea, set the matter for a hearing. Um, uh, tomorrow I'm in Lake City in the morning. Am I back here in the afternoon? You are. And do we have any docket tomorrow? We have uh, six final pre-trials. Okay. Well, all right. Um, I'll have it set for a, a hearing. I don't know. It'll probably be sometime next week. I have a trial over in Lake City. It's a three day long uh, criminal sexual conduct trial. So I don't know when we'll be able to get to it, but it'll probably be sometime next week. All right. All right. Um, and then, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't That's want to okay. interrupt. That's okay. Um, if the court, I don't know what the court's docket is like today, but if the court um, could clear the courtroom for a moment and I could speak to him oh, for a few moments. Here's, and here's, then... Let's go ahead and do this. Um, I see they have a smartphone. Do you have Zoom on your phone? I do. All right. Why don't you go ahead and dial into our Zoom. I'll give you the phone number. It is place you into a breakout room. And if you want Miss Longoria, you may use one of the other 
the attorney conference rooms or the jury room. All right, all right. Mr. Van Weeren, we will be back here in about five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. We're back on the record for People versus Van Weeren. All parties present before recess are again present. Uh, Mr. Van Weeren, are you still able to see and hear us, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Longoria. And we have the opportunity to speak with Mr. Van Weeren, and at this point, he is willing to make a no contest plea to the bond violation. Um, that and the no contest plea would be to shield him from any potential additional criminal liability. Well, we could do that. Um, to do that, I'd have to get a report. Maybe what we could do is just run a hearing right now. Yeah, that because I'm gonna have to look at something, I'm gonna take the time. We'll get the testing. We do have a community corrections probation violation report. All right. We do have that. All right. Why don't you go ahead and mark that, um, Ms. Carey? All right, Mr. Van Weir, I'm told today you're not really going to contest this allegation. Is that right, sir? Yes, sir. All right. So you don't need to make an admission. An admission might, in effect, get you into trouble criminally, and that's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way, the way it sounded. What I meant is uh, you don't need to make an admission, and I respect the fact that you don't want to. But I will also note that the rules of evidence do not necessarily apply at a probation violation hearing, which means, which is Michigan Rule of Evidence 1101. I think it's paragraph two, but don't quote me on that part. I now have what's marked as uh, plaintiff's exhibit number one. Uh, Ms. Carey, you're asking the court to accept it? I am. Ms. Longoria, any objection from the defense? No objection, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, the court uh, therefore admits people to exhibit number one. This is the uh, petition regarding bond that was filed earlier today. Uh, this is the one that does not bear my signature. Um, and we'll note, you guys saw Judge Fagman listed on this copy, but that's okay. You got the right one. So it says that the defendant tested positive. I'm going to ask. Uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. It also shows that the defendant uh, had a a device commonly called a whizinator, which it looks like a fake penis, and uh, there was urine uh, in the lower groin area that probably dispensed through that whizinator. I see that there is a statement here on a program violation report from Community Corrections that talks about it further, identifying that the defendant tested positive for meth. And the third is a photograph of that uh, resonator. And then lastly is a um, report of the test itself, uh, demonstrating that there is a 500 nanogram per milliliter cutoff and the defendant tested positive for methamphetamine. Therefore, the court finds the defendant in violation of his bond conditions. The next question becomes, what does the court do with the defendant in the meantime? Ms. Kerry, your position on behalf of the people. Thank you, Your Honor. People are going to request a remand. This is Mr. Van Weeren's second uh, violation for testing positive for methamphetamine. He tested positive on February 27th and was lodged on March 10th. He was released to treatment which he was released from treatment on April 10th. And uh, this test is from April, or I'm sorry, from May 6th, but was sent to the lab and received yesterday. So um, clearly, and, he, and the charges here are possession with intent to deliver meth as a second or subsequent, mm -hmm. resisting and obstructing as the have to. So um, I would ask, for remand because he clearly um, cannot follow the rules. Uh, Ms. Longoria, on behalf of your client, ma'am. Your Honor, uh, Mr. Van Weeren uh, did go to rehab um, and to try to address this issue, he's still struggling. He and um, he would ask for, we would ask that there be at least some sort of a bond put in place for him to be allowed to post bond if he is able to, so that he can continue to work towards um, getting the counseling and services that he needs to help to maintain that sobriety. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. 
Carey, can you tell me uh, what kind of criminal history the defendant has? Uh, I see, obviously, there was a maintain a drug house conviction back in 2005. Do you have anything else on there? Oh, and I'm sorry, also, there was the, well, the possession of marijuana, which allows a second or subsequent enhancement. I know. Um, 2000, it, it goes back. 2000 juvenile adjudication for um, larceny from a motor vehicle, 2001 operating while impaired, 2002 possession of marijuana, 2005 maintaining a drug house, 2006 possession of marijuana, 2013, I'm sorry, 2013 reckless driving, and 14 retail fraud, temp retail fraud third, 2017, 2016, receiving and concealing stolen property 200 to 1,000. Um, that's what I show. Well, uh, the court here looks at some discussion. Um, the defendant either had the methamphetamine and then used it or has twice gone out and obtained methamphetamine and used it based upon the two bond hearings or bond violations that stretched out over three months, which means that contributes to supplying in the community. That gives the court some concern for the community because demand can only go, I'm sorry, supply can only go where there is a demand. And by making a demand for it, uh, it encourages that the substances be delivered and supplied in the community, which gives the court concern for the safety of the community. The court also is concerned for the safety and health of the defendant if he is continuing to use, especially even after um, attending the program. Uh, the court is very concerned uh, uh, using substances and therefore could hurt himself. Uh, the court is also concerned here that we have issues of attempting to fake uh, out the testing program and testing personnel. Uh, he obviously knew he had used and uh, had come prepared uh, to broaden the system, I guess is the right word. Therefore, the court is going to revoke bond, remand the defendant to the custody of the Washington County Justice.